love to make sourdough bread. Um, my daughter has eczema and this bread seems to be the only thing that keeps her from breaking out really bad. So even when we do gluten-free bread, she still tends to get real itchy in the winter time. So sourdough, they say because it is like a fermentation process that it eats away a lot of that gluten. Not that it is gluten-free, but um, it does seem to help her skin. I have a special video for you all today. We are gonna spend the afternoon with my friend Liz. Liz runs an animal rescue. She is an exchange student coordinator and she has goats and horses and she lives in this amazing 1800s farmhouse. We're gonna cover all of this today and more. I brought some of my homemade candles for Liz as a thank you for letting us into her home. If any of you are interested in purchasing these candles that I make, the link is in the description. Another link that I'll put in the description will be Liz's new YouTube channel. I convinced her to start a YouTube channel because her life is so interesting and I know people would love to follow along. So if you'd like to check out her new YouTube channel, that link will be in the description also. So for now, let's get this video started. So I heard you got some kittens. We, we have a mama and her kitten from last year and her litter of six babies. Um, owners were going through a bad breakup and they had to rehome all of their animals. So we took the cats. Oh my gosh. So we have babies. Show us. So they're up for adoption, right? Yes, everyone has spoken for, I think, but one orange one right now and uh, possibly a black one because they have not committed. So these are the babies. This is my little thing I got. And it's great and it worked fantastic and then my dog ran into the front of it so we have to uh, put a new piece of plexiglass on there but okay this is mama right up here hi mama and then her litter her last litter she's up in the back there she's a little tortoise shell and then here's our baby hi sweet Mom. girl So tell us about your how you rescue. How does it work? Is it a nonprofit? We are not a nonprofit. I actually fund all of this craziness. You do? Yes. So they. Oh, hi, baby. They come to us in all different ways. People let them go. People find homes for them. I have to go wash my hands. Hang on, we're gonna start that one over because this one up. While Liz goes to wash her hands, um, I wanted to let you all know, if you wanna see more about Liz's farmhouse and you know how they've remodeled it and stuff, um, we did a video on it already and I will put the link to that video in the description if you're interested in that. I just love how cozy her kitchen is, so I wanted to share that with you real quick before we get back to the video. But it, you just get a wonderful feeling when you're in this kitchen. It's so cute. Well, Liz, you said these little kittens that you rescued, they have, what do they have, fleas and worms? They have flea, fleas, and then anytime they have fleas, they have tapeworms, because when they eat the eggs, the or they eat the flea, they lay eggs in their digestive system, and it's tapeworms. So we were just sitting here talking about how I, we can smell them right now. So they, um, they're on dewormer, so they're getting rid, they're digesting and getting rid of all the worms yeah. in the system right now. So. But it's not all, like... It's not all sunshines and rainbows. It's like not one thing's rescue is, it's hard. It's a lot of flea baths and vaccinations and deworming, and you have to keep up on that because I don't like animals to leave if they still have parasites or um, fleas or anything like that. So these are things that we take care of, and when it's a whole litter and extra adults, it's a lot of work. Let's go see one of the other animals that Liz has. Toby the tortoise. He is a Russian tortoise. He's full grown. He's about eight, maybe nine years old now. He's so, I love their faces. Yep, he's a little dry, you can see on the shell. So today I'll soak him. So we actually um, soak him in just like a warm water bath. Does and he like it? Does he swim around when you put him in a little um, bath? So they can't swim, he will drown. They're, um, but what he does is he'll go up to like where he can keep his nose out of the water. Yeah. And But he just soaks and that's how they actually hydrate themselves. Aww. They don't drink water, they absorb. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. So if they cannot, if you put them in, a, in any kind of water, they will drown. But do some turtles swim? Because we turtles have turtles. Swim, yes, this is a tortoise. Oh, I didn't even know there was a difference oh, between. Yes, it's a dry land. 
It's a dry band, warm, like tortoise. I just you'd learned something. <laughs> you'd find them in like Arizona and Nevada. There's tortoises there too. So many of you um, may notice that there's actually sun out today here in Michigan. It's We're weird. having, it's like 50 degrees and we have sun. And I think all these plants are really soaking it up. So Liz has crows. Okay, so tell us the crow story. So they're just wild crows, but they are always here. So I started feeding them in the morning. So after the kids leave for school, I take them Cheez-Its and ripped up oranges seem to be their favorite. And um, we have a, a specific spot. We feed them every morning and they will come. They'll actually, if I'm not out there, they'll start screaming for me from the trees. Do they so, bring you gifts? I heard crows yes. do that. So I've gotten a few like pop tops and I got an earring, um, coins, little pieces of like garbage, like tin foil, anything shiny, like a piece of a package. But they So anything things. shiny, the crows will like kind of bring it to you. Yes. Is that like their way of saying thank you for all the... Yes. It's like a repayment system. Will you take us out there in a little bit and show us where you yes. do it? Yeah, okay. they like shiny. So I have a silver plate, like an actual real silver plate. And I just put it right on there, but it's usually in the mornings. And as soon as they see me walk out, they'll start screaming. And there's a group of crows, it's called a murder. So that's what their name is. So we go out <laughs> that's there. That's crazy. My murder of crows is all around. Later in the video, we're gonna check out where she feeds her crows. But next we're gonna go check out the plant hospital. So this room was a breezeway to just the garage and we've been working on finishing it because um, we have nine people that live in our house. So it is, it's an old farmhouse. It's kind of like a lots of additions. So this room is an addition and this was the breezeway that led to the garage and we kind of made it part of the house and we are in the process of breaking up the floor and putting in a bathroom in here. But and part of why they have so many people living in the house is Liz hosts exchange students. Yes. Also, Liz is actually our coordinator. Uh, we got our exchange student, uh, Vicki, that you all met in a previous video. Yes, so I have uh, 20 kids that I am in charge of for, mm -hmm. for this year. Every year it changes. And um, I take in kids from all over the world. So I've been doing this since 2009. So I joke that I have daughters on the <laughs> Sorry, that probably wasn't good to scream. It's like attack. All right, come on this way. Okay. And this is our breezeway that we are redoing. So this whole area will become a bathroom. But for right now, it's my plant hospital. So all my plants that are doing so hot are in here under lights. Um, and we temperature control this for them. But I have, we picked up 15 orchids for free on Marketplace the other day. So they all needed a little TLC, so they've been treated and washed. And um, so, how do you get rid of spider mites on plants? Um, we use neem oil. It's an oil that you put on the plants and leaves, and it uh, kind of kills everything off. We just got a couple little lights on them. Um, I'm going to be doing a root trim on them here very shortly, probably this weekend. So you can see a lot of these roots are dead. There's nothing alive here. Um, but when you get down into orchids like this one so we orchids you don't use you can actually see the spider mite eggs right there all that white let me stuff. see oh so that little white stuff is spider mites okay so these are all um they need some work so this is actually bark and not dirt so what i'll do to take care of these is i'll end up taking all of the bark out of the roots because orchids don't need soil they actually prefer to be um to be able to breathe so when it comes time this weekend to clean this all out, I'm going to take off any of the roots that are dead. So like this is very obviously a dead root, um, but these ones here are alive and doing well. Orchid roots should be like a greenish silver color. And so like I said, they were free. I knew they needed some work. So they're gonna be getting a, a special spa treatment this weekend. How did you learn all this stuff about plants and how to take care of them? Um, just watching videos and things. I didn't have a lot of plants when I was younger, but ever since I've lived on my own, I've always collected plants. Mm -hmm. It seems to be quite the obsession the last couple of years, but. And now you rescue them. Yes. As well we as joke, cats we call and plant rescue. We go to Home Depot and get the ones that aren't looking so good. Um, but like same thing, this one wasn't doing so hot, so she's in here getting a little TLC. Um, this one was in my daughter's room, severely dehydrated, so I brought her out here to get 
give her a little extra. And she's right by the window. Mm -hmm. She's getting a little light. And then these are Monstera clippings that didn't quite take when I cut them off my big Monstera. So they're just in some fertilizer and water in here, seeing if they'll pick up a little bit. So, and this one was for free on Marketplace too. She's getting a little extra loving as well. And then you can see my beautiful wall here. This is where my German Shepherd, who was a puppy last year, decided that uh, drywall tastes fantastic. So he uh, ate the walls a little bit. But this is normally my little, it's kind of like where we separate the dogs and put, especially when we have rescue dogs, they hang out in here. Yes, I think that this comes with, with having rescue dogs and animals in the house, like, Absolutely. Like, uh, like on the door here. I think that- Oh yes, this is from our last. We have a big King Corso foster dog that's from him. Did you um, find a family for him? We did. We Aww. are on family number three, so fingers crossed this one works out. Aww. Now is the perfect time to go see where Liz feeds the crows that we were talking about earlier. Let's go outside. All right, we just heard the crows. Um, I turned the camera off, and we heard the crows. There they are. Oh, they're out there. We see them. <laughs> they're all coming. Oh, they're all coming. She's shaking the box and they hear it. Hi, babies. Okay, so here's your shiny tray that you put out. Silver. So I just use this and I just pour out some of their treats. They like Cheez-Its? They love Cheez-Its and oranges. People do unsalted peanuts, but I've noticed mine like orange. They're very smart. You can actually, they can speak. Like if you can, you can train them to speak. Really? They're very, they're as smart as, I think they say as a four or a seven year old child. Like they can problem solve, they can put together puzzles. It's illegal to keep them as a pet. So these are just wild crows, they're not mine. Wow. But I did not know that. They love my daughter. They seem to trust children. Um, my daughter, when she walks out for the bus stop, she just takes them with her and throws them on the ground. And as soon as she pulls away, they all fly down. Aww. And, uh, but she notices, she'll be like, the, cr the crows are talking to me. <laughs> Who's this, Liz? This is Flicka. Flicka! Flicka is a rescue pony. Her hey, owner Flicka. couldn't keep her anymore, so she came to live with us. It's mud season on the farm right now because it's nice out, so everything is muddy. And then how many goats do you have? We have eight goats. So we have Nigerian dwarfs, such as these guys. And these ones here, the longer haired ones, are silky fainter goats. So like the videos you see where they fall over. Yeah. <laughs> Silky what makes them faint? Uh, it's a, I believe it's something with their adrenal gland. And um, dogs can do it too. Like dogs can be, like they can pass out too. Hi, this is honey. Winnie. She won all kinds of awards at Oakland County Fair a few years ago. So we have like a celebrity here. Yes. Winnie. Hi, Winnie. Winnie. We Hi, have sweetie. Winnie and Dixie. That's her twin sister. They're actually triplets, and there's a boy too. Liz's property is approximately nine acres. Uh, she has chickens, horses, goats. She has many fruit trees. And at the back of her property is a beautiful lake, which is in the previous video we did in the summertime. This property is so beautiful in the summer. And I really can't wait for it to be summertime again. Liz just, just casually told me, oh, I have sourdough starter. Yes. So, so I love to make sourdough bread. Uh, my daughter has eczema and this bread seems to be the only thing that keeps her from breaking out really bad. So even when we do gluten-free bread, she still tends to get real itchy in the winter time. So sourdough, they say because it is like a fermentation process that it eats away a lot of that gluten. Not that it is gluten-free, but um, it does seem to help her skin. So how do you feed sourdough starter? So a sourdough starter just needs flour and water as the only thing you need. And the only thing else you need when you bake it is to add salt. So it's three ingredients, it's very easy, unless you want to make like rosemary sourdough or a sweet sourdough. So it actually takes two days to make a loaf of sourdough bread. You start it by, um, you're gonna add your flour and your water and you let it rise. So like you can see where this rubber band is. I fed her this morning and just maybe two hours ago, three hours ago, and so she's starting to rise, but she will double in size. So from where the rubber band is, she'll get all the way to the top and then start to deflate back down. When she gets all the way to the top, before she starts to deflate is when she's ready to bake. So then I will use that, and you add flour and water and salt, and um, you actually start to form your dough. And it's called stretch and folds, and you do them every 30 minutes. You do four of them. 
um, and then you proof them overnight in these special wooden bowls that I have and you cover them. And then um, after all your stretch and fold and it's proofed, the next day you prep her to be baked. So then you slice the top of it so it has this pretty kind of decoration there. You can kind of see that. Yes. Did you make those little circles on top too? Like that's the... actually part of my proofing bowl. That oh, has that's so pretty. So you can kind of see, like you can cut pretty designs in. Yeah. I've watched videos on people making sourdough, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't remember all the details. Yeah. And then this actually is one, this one here, the kids actually were eating on for breakfast. And you can kind of, that's what the inside of them looks like. This was a smaller loaf. Mm. But it's a very thick, hearty bread, but I cook in my terracotta Dutch oven, and then I also have a, a metal Dutch oven. So that's a terracotta Dutch this oven? Terra I've just had it forever and I love it. I think it makes a good loaf of bread, but a lot of people use these very expensive Dutch ovens. Um, I just have a $50 one and I have that. And you're happy with it. And I love it. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, that's great. I took a lot of footage of Liz's plants and talked to her about the different kinds of plants and how she takes care of them while well, I was there. Um, but there is so much footage that I couldn't fit it all in this video. So if you guys are interested in plants and plant care, definitely head to Liz's new channel and check it out where you can find a lot more on plant care and also the greenhouse that she built herself that's on her property. What were you just saying? You wanted to get a certain kind of plant? Yes, um, a uh, constellation monstera. It's the, it's actually that plant that's over there, but it is variegated with white. So you have like a lot of like, it's almost like an albino gene of it. So um, they're harder to grow because they, um, anytime a plant is white, it's actually a harder plant to grow because of the photosynthesis in the plant. So green and darker plants are easier to care for than like a white plant. Wow, I just learned something new. Yes. And I think your viewers are going to learn all kinds of stuff yes. like that on your channel. And I'm still learning too, but we will learn together. And I will teach you things I do know. This is where I'm going to leave you all. I hope you enjoyed this afternoon with my friend Liz. I forgot to tell you, this plant she's showing me here is 21 years old. But if you check out her channel, you'll get to hear all about it on there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you want to see more of. And thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.